Next presenter is Sandra Soliner, and she's going to speak to us regarding earthquake preparedness uh, in our community. Hi, I'm from the South University neighborhood, and uh, last fall, um, there was, there was always articles about earthquakes, but there was a pretty, a pretty large uh, article, I think it was in the Mercury on the New York Times, you know, couldn't have been the Times, they don't have earthquakes, um, in the Mercury News about how, oh, you know, past due for 30, mm -hmm. 30 years past due. Uh, about the same time my daughter went to Nepal, and she got there and she called me and she said, oh, mom, they're 30 years past due for a big earthquake. And two weeks later they had a 7.9. Mm -hmm. um, she was camping out at the time, she was in a tent, so she was fine. 8,000 people were killed. And I don't think we have, you know, we have much better code and, and much better building than they had the earth, so I don't think that would happen. But if we have a really major earthquake, we can have a lot of injuries and we, and we can have some deaths. And so I thought, well, I want to do something in my neighborhood to uh, prepare my neighbors, to tell them, to get them to know, okay, what do you do when you walk through your house or your apartment? What do you do to make sure it's safer, that things aren't flying off the shelves and bookcases aren't coming over in your kids and there's no mirror over your bed and these kinds of things. And, you know, you want, you know, those little pokes on your kitchen cabinet so your dishes don't fly out and hit you in the face. Um, and what do you do, what do you actually do when an earthquake strikes? You don't go stand at the door, which is the old thing. That's not it, actually. You, you hit the floor, you get on your knees. If there's nothing to crawl under, you cover your head. If there is, you crawl under it and you stay under there and you hang on to it and stay with it until the earthquake's over. Uh, and you stay inside, you don't go running outside. Which, when there was an earthquake, that's what we did. We, stayed, we ran outside after the earthquake. It was a wrong thing. Um, but, um, so I don't know, okay, I'll, I'll find something and uh, I'll present it. So I, I looked at the Office of Emergency Services, which is San Jose, and on their website it says, uh, we regret that at this time we're not offering any training uh, for communities due to lack of volunteers and um, materials. Okay, so I got to call the Red Cross 13 times. I'm not exaggerating, I actually called 13 times, and they returned a phone call. So I drove out to their office in, out on North First Street, and um, the blood bank was operating, but the other office is, there's nobody there, it's closed. And there was a sign that said, call this phone number, same number, and called the 14th time, over there, called back. So uh, then I called uh, Paul Piera, <laughs> hey Paul, and um, he didn't know anything, he said, well, call 211, the county referral number. And they did. So I called 211, and they did a nice search for me, but no, there's nothing. And um, so I said, okay, well, I'll make one. So I went online. To, well, actually, before I said that, I went online to see if there was something online at ready.gov, which is the FEMA site or uh, Berry, um, Association of Bering Governments. And I found a lot of handout material, but nothing that was ready to present. But I printed out that material, and from it, I made a PowerPoint. And um, then one of um, a woman on the um, University of Neighborhoods Coalition Board uh, which Pete is on also, uh, when I showed it to me, she said, you know, I'm a professional making these, I can make that look a lot better. It's great, so she did, it looks really professional now. And um, uh, as a couple of other people uh, have seen it. Um, uh, uh, Dr. Eckstone at San Jose State University teaches communications, and he's offered to help me get it out there and get it marketed, I mean, not marketed, because people know about it. Uh, what I wanted was a presentation that does not require a volunteer. Mm -hmm. Nobody has to go out and give the presentation. You can uh, you can show it to your club, to your Rotary Club, to your kids, to to anybody at a church, um, your family. You don't have to. Nobody has to go out there. And so, um, put that together. And and I have to say I'm sorry. I thought I'd have it ready tonight. It isn't quite. It is going to be. It's it's going to be turned into a video. It's going to be on YouTube. And. Um, then the and it will be narr narrated. Um, the narrator is not going to be me. It's my next door neighbor, Martha Solomon, who's a professional singer. She's got a great voice. Someone else that Pete knows. Um, and then you will actually be able to go there and get it, or you can go to um, South University's website and you can download it there, or uh, the University of his Coalition Facebook page. And the other thing that I we were going to have there are going to be the links to these great handouts that I found. Uh, this one is Standing Roots and Planning Guide. It's really good. Um, front and back, it pretty much tells you everything you need to know. Uh, the Red Cross side, they have these in about eight languages. And uh, so I, what I did, because um, I did do a couple of presentations, I did, I did English on all of them, Spanish on about 70% of the back, and Vietnamese on about 30%.
and um, and then here is um, disabilities, which I thought was another another good one. So these will all be available to download and print. Now, um, I've got a mini grant from Earl's office, and we printed out some, and I've got some. I'm going to be Saturday. We're having a big neighborhood, uh, probably 300 people in our neighborhood. If you want to give me a sign, um, and, and I'm going to have a table, and you know, I'm trying to talk to people. Um, so what I what I'd like to do, if you're interested, is when I get this ready to go, which I, at the end of the month is my absolute got to be done, then I'll send D the link, uh, or the links, and then if you feel interested, you can go and, and you can look at it and see if you want to show it, look at it, see it, and tell somebody else about it. Um, and uh, Dr. X Jones says that if I can get something down to five minutes, he can get it in the movie theater, so I'm hoping that that works out really well. Thank you. So that's, that's it. I do have some, some um, some of these um, flyers, I'll just leave these for you. you know, look out them, take them, please don't throw them in the trash. Can um, I just say kudos to Sandra? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, here, here, are, here are flyers, and um, so at least you can read those and discuss them out to your neighbors. Well, thank you very so, much for your time. Thank you. Do you have a thank question? You. Oh, yeah, questions, oh. sure. I, I think I have a question, too. You have several. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, there are a number of like places that nonprofits they bring out their halls you know, to the public you know, to raise money, you know, mm -hmm. like banquet halls and so mm -hmm. forth. And uh, I don't think I think a lot of people are not aware if like if they're renting a hall and they're having a party and then there's an earthquake, what do they do? So is there some way to get that message to people that are renting it? Like getting something well, you know, in, a, in a that newsletter that or a website as, as or something like that. To get this out in, um, you know, neighborhood newsletters, uh, neighbor next door, uh, yeah, as many um, places, Rotary clubs, um, and various groups that. Um, but you know, as many places I can have people whose awareness that you, right. you know, you need to take this. But you know, mainly what you need to do is people need to know that if you're in an earthquake, you get hit your floor and you get under something, you get away from windows, and, and things are falling. And um, and you stay there and unless the building is falling down and burning, you stay there until yeah. it's safe to leave, and that's. That's kind of the major thing that people need to know. And after the earthquake's over, don't light a candle if there's no power, uh, which would be very likely. There may not be power for days. Don't light a candle. You can have a gas leak. Mm -hmm. um, there are these great little emergency radio, flashlight, cell phone chargers that you you, you can just wind up, and they're terrific, and they're about $20, $25. Mm -hmm. um, I have one. They're yellow, bright yellow light like this with a, with a nice flashlight on it. Oh, it has, has an alarm and has a, a flashing red light and a siren. It's just it's really fabulous. I yeah. love them for Christmas for all my kids. Um, <laughs> Most people have cell phones now that with flashlights and alarms and all that in it now. Do you need the really battery? You no, there, well, there's no battery. They oh, they just don't require batteries. Oh. Yeah. The, you know, they, they, wind they wind them up. up and they don't require oh. batteries. Oh. So that's, uh, and they have, they have a, uh, a cell so that they actually are, are uh, solar. So if you, you can get to charge them during the day, and if it's at night or something, they're not working. You can you can do that. So that they're really really nice. Um, there's um, you know there's you know in a uh, so aside from you know getting your house ready, there's the thing about you know tell your kids where to meet you afterward. I mean if they're at school, they're out playing, and and there's earthquake, you know have everybody have somebody out of the area that they can call to say I'm safe. Don't stay on the phone. Text if you can. You know, don't stay on the phone because those phones are going to might be needed for emergency services. And uh, just you know, there's just you know, quite a quite a number of things that would make people safer. And that's just I want people to know that to be prepared. So when it happens, you know, you'll know what to do, and you'll do it because you'll know what to do. Any, any more questions? I was just going to say that Mary Tucker was behind me mm -hmm. last year. Put together an emergency preparedness fair mm -hmm. for um, for our neighborhood association, and it wasn't just about earthquakes. Yeah. Although earthquakes exactly. is, is like the, probably the worst you know thing, but it was a re it was a, an amazing amount of work she put into it. <coughs> but it's something if your neighborhood association wants to think and about doing. And I have lots of stuff left over, which I want to get your name and phone number so I can uh, get it. Well, I, I, I'm not going out making presentations. I got stuff from the is, that was the problem with with the Office of Emergency Services. Oh, who by the way approved of their presentation? I sent it over to them. I looked at it and they said, great. Good information looks good. So they have. I did want to make sure that I wasn't you know, sending people off in the wrong place. Right. Uh, but you know, I think people just don't have. Well, it's Saturday. 
I know I have a box. Of I stuff. have a box. Okay, well, if I can get that, I'll I'm, I'm going to have a booth I'm out there, a table, and passing out stuff. Um, the, um, but the, the, the other thing is, I just wanted this to be easy. Once it's done, easy for everybody. So it, it's not a, it's not a project, and none of us need more projects. I mean, we've got plenty of projects, don't we? Excellent. Okay. Excellent. My time is up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.